of Israel, who have been without knowledge of themselves for countless generations, and who are now being awakened by the God of the universe to better serve our Creator. It is our hope that by reacquainting this awakening black nation 
for their laws and former history. It will hasten our return to our true identity, thereby acknowledging our ancient ancestors. This, in turn, will allow us to know our Father's God and prepare us to stand together to meet the terrible day of the Creator that He is now ready in for all mankind. May He cause all your minds and hearts to understand. Shana Tova Lakim, Shabbat Shalom Lakim, and I hope and pray that the Holy One of Israel will bless each and every one of you, comfort those families that are mourning uh, the loss of a loved one, heal the sick, we pray to the Most High, help those that are physically challenged, and we are thankful to the Most High that he's capable of helping the needy, the poor, and protecting all of us. Shana Tova, the Kim means Happy New Year to every one of you. And many out there probably would wonder why am I saying Happy New Year? And our program today will, I'm sure, help to explain uh, our greeting at this time. Today, our topic is don't be an April Fool. And it has to be thought provoking, I would think. It's about being wise or being a fool, and it is a choice. When the Bible says in Isaiah 29, 9, be stupid or stupefy yourselves, it means that the chosen people, Israel, would be made fools. Their common sense would be turned into a spirit and mind of degenerate, foolish behavior. Last week, I asked a question about who do we turn to to find the most righteous nation on earth today? And we're still wanting for the answer. Same question can be asked, well, who are the most foolish people on earth today? Now, and I would have to say, without prejudice, we are. We claim that title. And the Bible says that we would be made fools. See, when you give up wisdom, the only thing left for you is to be a fool. In Psalm 83, and let's read Psalm 83, verses one to five, or well, let's just take the verse that we have to save our time. Four, they hold crafty counsel against thy people and take counsel against thy treasured ones. They have said, come, let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel be, may be no more in remembrance. And of course, our name is no more in remembrance. We're known as colored people, black people, Negroes, what have you. Africa, Afro-Americans, African, Caribbean people, but that's not a name of a nation or a people. Let's listen to a tape that we have that gives us some information behind April Fool's Day. It says. In 1857, ticket to Washington Alliance at the Tower of London in London, no such event ever took place. A disputed association between April 1st and foolishness is in Geoffrey Chaucer's The Canterbury Tales, 1392. In the nun's priest's tale, a vain caught cantilier is tricked by a fox on sin march begin 30 days and two. Readers apparently understood this line to mean 32 of March, i.e. April 1st. However, it is not clear that Chaucer was referring April 1st. Since the text of the nun's priest tale also states that the story takes place on the day when the sun is in the sign of Taurus had Y Rune, 20 degrees and 1, which cannot be April 1st. Modern scholars believe that there is a copying error in the extant manuscripts and that Chaucer actually wrote, Sin March was gone, 
If so, the passage would have originally meant 32 days after March, i.e. the 2nd of May, the anniversary of the engagement of King Richard II of England to Anne of Bohemia, which took place in 1381. In 1508, French poet Eloy de Amerval referred to a poison de Aver, April Fool, literally April's fish, possibly the first reference to the celebration in France. Some writers suggest that April Fools originated because in the Middle Ages, New Year's Day was celebrated on March 25th in most European towns with a holiday that in some areas of France specifically ended on April 1st. And those who celebrated New Year's Eve on January 1st made fun of those who celebrated on other dates by the invention of April Fool's Day. The use of January 1st as New Year's Day became common in France only in the mid-16th century, and the date was not adopted officially until 1564 by the Edict of Roussillon. In 1561, Flemish poet Edward de Denay wrote of a nobleman who sent his servants on foolish errands on April 1st. In 1686, John Aubrey referred to the celebration as Fool's Holy Day, the first British reference. On April 1st, 1698, several people were tricked into going to the Tower of London to see, quote, end quote, see the lions washed. Although no biblical scholar or historian is known to have mentioned a relationship, some have expressed the belief that the origins of April Fool's Day may go back to the Genesis flood narrative. In a 1908 edition of the Harper's Weekly cartoonist, Bertha R. MacDonald wrote, Authorities gravely back with it to the time of Noah and the Ark. The London Public Advertiser of March 13, 1769 printed, The mistake of Noah sending the dove out of the Ark before the water had abated on the first day of April, and to perpetuate the memory of this deliverance, it was thought proper. Whoever forgot so remarkable a circumstance to punish them by sending them upon some sleeveless errand similar to that infectual message upon which the bird was sent by the patriarch. In the UK, an April Fool prank is sometimes later revealed by shouting April Fool at the recipient who becomes the April Fool. A study in the 1950s by folklorist Iona and Peter Opie found that in the UK and in countries whose traditions derived from the UK, the joking ceased at midday. This continues to be the current practice with the custom ceasing at noon, after which time it is no longer acceptable to play pranks. Thus, a person playing a prank after midday is considered the April Fool themselves. I would like us to think about what we've heard. A number of interesting things take place. One, we have a case of where Noah supposedly sends out the dove, and we all know that history where the dove goes, and they're saying the fact that he's just flying around, that it was a prank the dove was being made a fool of because there was really no place to land. Now, you know that doesn't make sense about April Fool. It's an international day. People have April Fool's Day in Israel now and all over on news media. Companies play pranks on their people. But what's the real origin of it? I would like to give you a spin that I really think is the true origin. We are the April Fools. Why? Because during this very time of March and April, we should all be aware that this is our new year and we're not. We think that it was celebrated in, in December. In fact, I want to know why isn't December 21st the April Fool's Day or some of the other days, Easter, April Fool's Day, because they are, they're using deception. It's all in the Bible. You just have to understand, you know, they have some speakers that I've heard them, evangelists like Joe Osteen, uh, speaks some very wise sermons, but he will never go into the Bible the way I am because this is speaking to the so-called Black man, the Negro, the man who was brought into slavery, and so is the Bible. They don't teach the Bible as a story that relates to the experience of our people. And that's what we have to understand. It's all about you, the whole Bible. It's just understanding. It's not an interpretation. It's an understanding 
of what the Bible is saying. And we're gonna look at some of those things today. The conspirators see us as fools because we have been fooled and are still unaware of this March, April 1st and the month of April relationship in connection with our identity as Israelites. For example, the creator's Passover is called and portrayed as the Jewish Passover season. So you don't connect black people with Passover, but you connect Jews with it. People are confused about the difference between Israelites and Jews. So that adds more, again, confusion to the subject. And there is a bias and a double standard for the clearing and following and portraying and using courage, the coverage by the media of our Passover. Why do they ever visit one of our temples, our Yom Kippur services, or even mention it in the news? Because it's all part of an international conspiracy. The 83rd, 83rd Psalm tells us that. They have conspired against you with one consent. Who? The nations have done it. And all of these seasons, having us observe the wrong season is as much a part of the conspiracy as not teaching us the true seasons of what we should be doing. And many people don't know it, but let me tell you something. Not until long ago, everyone in the ancient world knew that this time of spring, the spring equinox, was the time of the new year. It's the Western Hemisphere that changed it and made it into what we know today, January 1st. We have been April fools, March fools, May fools, June, July, August, September, October, November, December fools, and January and February fools, because they are not allowing us to know the truth and the knowledge. The scriptures say, Hosea, Hosea, the Fourth chapter, sixth chapter, read the precept there. My people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee. Thou shalt be no priest to me. Seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I also will forget thy children. Mochai forgot our children. He's left them to fend for themselves in the earth. This has been going on for hundreds of years, thousands of years as a people. We've been the hand-me-down slaves on the planet Earth, and we have to figure out this puzzle and understand it's all in the Bible. That's why in Isaiah 29, 9, it gives us this understanding. But if you don't have the discernment to read the Bible intelligently, you won't know that he's saying when he says stupefy you, you'll be stupid. He means become fools, and that's what we are. I know you know there's nobody just in the Negro. We, have the, we are determined by everybody on earth. Nobody's, everybody plays the fool. I remember that song, everybody plays the fool sometime. I just can't remember the group that sang it, but all of us know it. Everybody plays the fool sometime. And you know, we all have, but that's not the point. A people, according to the Bible, the chosen people of the creator would become fools. He said, stupefy yourselves. Stupefy yourselves and be stupid. Blind yourselves and be blind. You that are drunken, but not with wine. You're not drunk with wine. You're drunk with a spirit that the Creator has put on you. He's closed your mind, our minds, to the knowledge of who we are and the knowledge of what is right and wrong. That stagger, but not with strong drink. For Jehovah poured upon you the spirit of deep sleep and had closed your eyes, the prophets, and your heads. The seas have he covered. Everybody in the nation, all of our intelligent ones, and he tells you that it's all sealed up in a book. And the vision of all this is become unto you as the words of a writing that is sealed. I'm revealing the sealed information, the thing that black people are not taught in church. They're not taught on television. They can't teach this because it'll speak directly to you to whom the Bible is speaking. Which men deliver to one that has learned, saying, Read this. I pray thee. And he said, I cannot. For it is sealed. And the writing is delivered to him that has not learned, saying, Read this. I pray thee. And he said, I am not learned. In other words, we can't figure out this because it's a spirit that the Almighty has put on us and made us stupid because we rejected the wisdom that he gave us in his Torah, the way 
of the light, intelligent living, and we rejected it. And so we as a people and everybody on the earth, I just hope one day my Hispanic brothers would say he's right. My European brothers all over Europe who know this is true will say, because creator said they're gonna confess one day. I hope they'll just say, this is true. They are the people of the Most High. And because many of you won't believe me, but you believe them Europeans and everybody else when they tell you because the scripture says in prophecy must be fulfilled. They are going to tell us what I'm saying is true and what so many others have been saying before me and are still saying all over this internet today. There are programs all over telling the people with the Israelites, but there's confusion in that because some of us are saying it in a confused manner and that they can't discern when they hear an intelligent person speak and they hear someone speak about the same thing unintelligently, they don't know what to do. People are in limbo today. They don't know which way to go. Confusion is everywhere. According to one of many probable origins of April Fool's Day is the one that I'm gonna give you. I know that one about Noah sending out that dove. You didn't go for that one. I hope not. Or you really a fool. I hope you don't believe that some of the other things you've heard that they've given in that information that was read to you. That's foolishness. I'm telling you. If we can listen to that, then I'm sure you have no problem listening to my reason for telling you this is April Fool's Day. Because we're blind to our heritage. We're blind to what is our way of life. And that's why we have to awaken and we have to understand that we have been fooled. You know that. One thing about a person that has a problem, they have to recognize the problem before they ever can find a cure to it. If we don't see our behavior as being degenerate, low, debased, then I don't know what to tell you. I mean, it's the sad, the planet, everybody's fools now. Don't think that I'm saying we're the only ones. That's by no means. Everybody has played the fool sometime or another. Even an individual like myself. Every one of us, when we're young, when you're stupid, you make mistakes. The only one who don't is the creator. He's the intelligent one of the universe. Yes, my people must understand the scriptures, the Bible because it speaks to you. That's right, you are the person that the Bible is speaking to when it speaks about a fool. Let me break some definitions about a fool because maybe that'll help us understand. You know, first of all, I wanna tell you about some cases of fools. It was a man, he was gonna rob the bank and he called the bank up and told the teller to prepare the amount of money for him so when he got there, the money would be ready. And of course, the bank teller called the police and you know they were waiting for him to come. That ain't the end of his foolishness. He gave his friend a note to give to the teller to tell him his name so that when he got there, the teller would know he is the one that sent the information to have the money ready. Now, you know the end of that story, how it ended. Cops were there waiting for him. But that's not the end of it. There's more foolish behavior than that. You know that, and I know that. There are all cases of how people just can do foolish things and act in a foolish way. I know one case is serious cases of foolishness because the Torah tells you there's all kinds of fools. In fact, I'm going to give you a list of them because we have to know it that, you know, the Bible speaks of fool, different kinds of fools. There's more than one. See, I'm gonna give you Hebrew words to tell you there's different kinds of fools because you know when I'm telling you, it's true because the Bible is the word of truth. And I'm telling you, let's look at some of them because I can give you examples even with these here. Let's take the fool who is uh, uh, the sakil. That's a Hebrew word, samek, kaf, a yod, which is a kid at gadol under the kaf, and a lamed, sakil. Now, this word is a self-confident person. It's a person who has a boast and they're so self-confident, I'm gonna knock you out. You ever see them boxes that say that, you know, in round three, uh, Ali did it, he was good. Sometimes you can get it right, but you know, he didn't get it right all the time either. 
And so you get these boxers who said, all of them said, I'm going to knock him out in this round. But it don't always turn out that way because you can boast. But in the Torah, there's a passage that says, we were going to war with another kingdom. And our brother Joab told him, and the Moses, I said, look, tell him, don't speak as one that's taken off your armor as though, and thou has not put it on. You acting like the fight is over and you just taking off your war gear and you didn't even have a victory yet. That's how the Torah explains it and the Bible explains it. Like, don't boast about the battle until the battle is over. You don't know who's gonna win. <coughs> Wisdom. Another word, sakal, same word, sakil, to make foolish. You know, God can make you a fool. I remember in the Torah again, where he speaks about, the, they pray and they say, turn the wisdom of Ahitophel into foolishness. Because they said Ahitophel was a counselor, that when he gave counselor, it was like God spoke himself. So in that war and that scuff that took place with David's children and Joab and of course Solomon having to figure out, well, Whose advice should I follow? They knew a heat to fell. Yah turned his wisdom into foolishness because Yah can do that with any of us. You can have an idea and a thought, and he can make it the most stupidest thing that you've ever done. He made us fools. Look at the black man, look at my people. And there are other people who are fools also, but we're talking about the Bible and the truth of the Bible. It's speaking to the Negro, the Israelite man that you call the Negro and the black man. He's called Sikalut in Hebrew. He's a person of folly. Everybody knows it. We do the worst things to each other. Some of our foolishness is serious. When you sell your own mother drugs, you a fool. When you make your own sister prophesy, a prostitute, you're a fool. Don't let anybody tell you anything other than that. When you will kill your babies in your neighborhood and shoot randomly in your own neighborhood around your own people, you're a fool. Don't deny it. We are foolish people and we're doing stupid stuff. And that means you're a fool. Stupid and fool, you can put them in the same sentence and interchange. Ya'al, another word in Hebrew for fool. About 20 years ago, I looked up this word fool and I was astounded, found out how many definitions there were for fool in Israel. In the Hebrew language, Ya'al, to become a fool. And all of these start off proverbs. When you read a proverb in Hebrew, it's got one of these words for the fool in it. It's not always the same word. Halal, in the Muslim community, Halal is to have that meat that is cooked and prepared and supposed to be fit for consumption. In Hebrew, it means to boast. You're bragging, like I said before, you a fool to brag, or I'm gonna put $10 million on number so-and-so because I had a dream and I know I'm gonna hit. And you know that number did not come out. Why do you try 50 cents? or two dollars. And I even thought about 50 cents. I said, why would a person name themselves 50 cents when you could have been a dollar? I mean, like we got stupid names that I don't know if you think about it, but I just, like I said, just want you to think a little bit today that I think you could have chose a better, chose a better name and some of them got worse names than that. This is not about a person. This is about knowledge, about wisdom and having the sense to know what to do, what to say because some of this foolishness is about speaking. We speak stupidness out of our mouths. Now, about I've seen people argue over how many home runs did Mickey Mantle hit a Babe Ruth or so for hours. I mean, you could have been making money. You could have been learning a trade, taking a class in college, and you were on the corner talking about somebody. And then the little white boy, guess what he's doing? He's saving up Mickey Mantle car because 20, 30, 40 years from now, he's getting $500,000 for LeBron's card when he first was a rookie. And we are there running about arguing over who's the best player, LeBron or, uh, or Jabbar or, or Kareem. 
I mean, come on. They all good. <laughs> if you look at them, in fact, there are too many good players to even say one is better than the other. One might jump high, another one got a better jump shot. Kyrie got a handle, another one don't. Uh, Steph can shoot it. Come on. They're all good in their own right. Why can't we say Yah is the greatest? He made them all. See, everything I say runs back to the most high. He is the greatest in everything, the wisest. When you have Yah as your God and you forsake him, you are fool. We have a precept to tell you about that. And we're gonna look at those precepts because it's very important to know and understand these things. Let's take again, another precept. Let's take Psalm 74, Jeremiah five and six. Got it? Jeremiah, take me four. 22, Jeremiah. For my people is foolish. They know me not. They are such as children, and they have no understanding. They are wise to do evil, but to do good, they have no knowledge. We don't have no knowledge to do the right thing. We could act a fool, and many other people do too. But no, we are mocked by this, brothers and sisters. I'm telling you, we are the, la the laughing stock of the earth. Now, if you don't know that, you haven't been living. We are the, the, the joke, we are the punt of every joke that they tell. You should be at their dinner table when they're talking about how stupid we are sometimes. And they're listening too. They know it's true. I just wish they'll admit it so that we can get the righteous people because you are the one, the same one who's a fool. You're the only one that can become the most right on the earth. That's why nobody's taking your spot since you've given it up, Israel. My people, you can be the best of the best when you're good. And when you're bad, we're the worst of the worst. Cole Levy used to say when we're good, we're great, we're wonderful. When we're bad, we're horrid. And I tell you, when we're bad, nobody can top us. But I'll tell you something, when we're good, Nobody can talk us either. I've been watching, and if you look at sports, there were times when they wouldn't let us play baseball, basketball, football, and now we dominate the leagues because they gave us a chance. Why don't you take the chance on being intelligent and being righteous? I guarantee you'll take us to the top as a people. It's the way all nations rise. No nation that's been great has ever been a stupid nation. We got to get some wisdom. Let's take our next precept. Remember this how the enemy hath reproached Jehovah, and how a base people have blasphemed thy name. Read on. Next precept. Yes. Thy, thy throne of glory on high from the beginning, thou place of our sanctuary. Though our hope, though hope of Israel, Jehovah, all that forsake thee shall be ashamed. They that depart from thee shall be written in the earth. Isn't that happened for us? Didn't it happen to us? Because we have to realize that we have become no people because we forsook the creator and he was our help. He's our power that we no longer have on our side. Wherefore a lion out of the forest doth slay them, a wolf of the deserts doth spoil them, a leopard watched over their cities. Every one of going out thence is torn in pieces. Because their transgressions are many, their backslidings are increased. We're dying because our transgressions are catching up with us and we're doing too much evil to not have, even the planet is suffering because of sin and foolishness. We're not the only fools, but we were to lead the nations in a wise way. And when you take wisdom from us and take it from the people, I told you Africa fell, and you know you got the greatest corruption in the countries with the greatest wealth. Where, why, are in, why is Africa falling? Because they're doing stupid, foolish things to each other. And that's why the European is taking advantage of any people that allows that will just to be their own enemies, you're inviting the enemy to conquer you. Because if you destroy yourselves and are divided from within, a divided house cannot stand. You're not wise, you're not sticking together. You're not 
for each other's best interests. That's how you get blessings. And that's what the creator is looking for from us, his chosen people to whom the wisdom was given. Mm. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. They have dealt corruptly and have done abominable iniquity. There's none that do it good. Don't you know how many places you're going to see that in other places in the Bible? The fool have said in his heart, there is no God. Now, how many fools do we have on earth today that don't even know the true and given God? In one place, it says that a fool is the person that says there's no God. But even worse than that person is the person who don't know that there is a God. You're a fool too, because you don't even know the true and living. That's what the scriptures say. This is not to shame you, anyone. It's to hopefully make you think about the Bible and its proper understanding. Let's listen to a little music before we come back with some more wisdom, knowledge, and understanding from our Holy Scriptures. Deception 
in this earth today. And we are the fools, we're the bunt behind all these tricks that they're playing on us. A Nabal, you remember the man Nabal called a churl? Well, Nabal is another word for empty and foolish. A Nivla is a female fool. See, a woman can be a fool too. You know that? See, being a fool has nothing to do with color of your skin, gender, ethnicity. In fact, stupidness discriminates against anybody. It doesn't care who wants to be a fool. Foolishness welcomes you. So I want you to know, top down is a foolish talk and thing. Some people talk stupidness and they spend a lot of time doing it. All day long, arguing over nothing. PT sounds like petty. PT in Hebrew. It's a simple person. You're just foolish, just simple. Don't take nothing serious. Some people laugh about everything. Everything is a joke. You're a fool. That's what they're talking about. An idiot. You know what you mean when you say a fool? You mean an idiot. Somebody that really don't have any understanding or little understanding about how to use their judgment. Little or none. When it comes to making judgments, they, they just don't have it up here. That's what it is, a fool. It's no common sense. That's what I know. Common sense is not so common today. I've lived long enough to remember when common sense was pretty prevalent. But it looks like as time has gone on, like as soon as we pass 1999 and hit 2000, that's when foolishness just took off. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if you understand, but if you've been watching like some of us elders, we can tell you that we have seen the world go crazy. But see, foolishness is crazy too. Because that's the, the creator told me he's going to cause us to go mad. But nobody never thought about it and said, well, the creator was going to cause us to go to be fools. That's what he meant when he said in Deuteronomy. That he was going to make us go mad. In the day, we would say what it was night. And at night, we would say what it was day. Because we are frightened over nothing. And then he says, when it comes to the enemy, we got all the fear of the fury of the enemy, but we don't fear the creator that can kill you and the enemy and wipe the whole planet off. That's foolishness. Fearing God is the beginning of wisdom. <laughs> That's what you have to know that he can take you out at any time, make you blind. He can make you crazy and take your mind. He can give you a tumor anywhere in your body at any time he wants to. Any one of us could wake up tomorrow and have a pain, go to the doctor, and he says, you don't have much time left. That's why people should fear the creator and keep his commandment, because you could be perfect right now, and he could just say the word, cancer. You got it. Death, 315 on such and such day. Nothing's going to stop. People don't live that way. They don't consider the power of the Most High and how the heavens are part of this earth and the creator rules over heaven and earth. Let's listen to some wisdom in Jeremiah, okay? Jeremiah 2, verse 14 and 19. Is Israel a servant? Is he a home, home born slave? Why has he become a prey? Thine own wickedness shall correct thee and thy backsliding shall reprove thee. Know therefore and see that it is an evil and a bitter thing that thou hast forsaken Jehovah thy God. Neither is my fear in thee, said Jehovah, God of hosts. That's what the scripture is saying, exactly what I said. I told you, I just reiterate what the book is saying. And that's why it's verifiable. You know that he's speaking to a people and I'm telling you, he's speaking to his people and that people is Israel and we are the Israelites. It goes on to say more about this very subject. Fools is all through the Bible. Verse 11. Hath a nation changed its gods, which yet are no gods? But my people have changed its glory, but that which doth not profit. Be astonished, O ye heavens, at this, and be horribly afraid. Be exceedingly amazed, say to whole. 
For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and you them out cisterns, broken cisterns that can hold no water. You had everything. We had everything and we gave it up for nothing. You had the most powerful force in the universe, eternal force, the one who can give life and sustain life, give your length of days, and you wouldn't obey his simple instructions to be nice. You're a fool. That's why every day I have to say, Forgive me for all my sins that I've committed, knowingly or unknowingly, from the day I was born, until this moment. Forgive my forefather, our forefather, for their sins in their day and time. And forgive the sins of our children, even in the future. And bless their minds and hearts to know and do righteousness according to your Torah and your law. My personal prayers, because I know that we are guilty. And I say it, I shall know we are guilty before the Creator. And the Bible is speaking to us. And all the people who are listening that are not Israelites, my brothers and sisters, you know what I'm saying is true. You know there's no fool like my people. And the Creator says it too. He just said it. My people are foolish, sottish people. And as I said, read that 422 again. And we've given up the true and living God. You can hold on. We've given up the creator, the fountain of living waters, flowing waters, my kindness moving that tells you that is clean waters. And you've given it up for something that can't even hold water, pot with holes in it. You ended up inheriting nothing. That's what the Bible's saying. That's how you became a Negro. You weren't always a Negro. We weren't always called black people. We were the holy people, the chosen of Almighty God. And we didn't do what's right. And that's why we're in this situation. Righteousness will exalt us. Sin tore us down. It's a reproach to any people. That's all the Bible is saying. That's all that I'm saying to you. Give them some more wisdom from the Holy Scriptures. Holy Scriptures. Proverbs 8, verse 1 through 5. Doth not wisdom call and understanding put forth her voice? From the time you're born, somebody's trying to tell you right and giving you some wisdom how to tie your shoe, how to eat your food and hold a spoon or, spoon or fork. Read on. In the top of high places, by the way, where the past me, she stands. In other words, when you go outside and from the doors of your mother's womb, wisdom is waiting there for you. Beside the gates, at the entry of the city, at the coming in at the door, she cried aloud. Any door you want to think about, you, it's a door that can open you to wisdom, but there's folly therein as well. Unto you, O oh man, I call. I'm speaking to all human beings. And charity, charity begins at home. And everybody should feel the same way. I feel that if you're an Italian, you should be for Italians first. If you're an Englishman, you should want the English people to be healthy, alive, and safe first. If you're one of my Cuban brothers and sisters, you should be for Cubans. You should be for other people too, but you should be for your own first. No different with us. Our people are foolish because, see, we believe that we should mistreat our brother when the strangers come so that he can know that we're not against him. That's foolishness. You should treat your brother good and treat the strangers well too. You know, once I was asked this, a man in India, in Guyana, he was an East Indian man, one of my brothers. And he said, Brother Cohen, if your son and my son was in a pool drowning and you could only save one of them, which one would you say? I said, my son. And then I asked, I said, which one do you say? My son. <laughs> See, he just wanted to know, was I stupid enough to say his son? 
Are you a fool? Which one would you save? Your own? Let him drown and save someone? And then all that told him, I said, here's why. What am I going to tell my mother and my father when I get home? I let my brother die because I had to show the people that I wasn't prejudiced and save that other Indian child first. What do you think your mother and father should do to you when she's going to bury her son, your brother? Just think about it. Just want you to think about intelligence because we are not an intelligent people when we do things that are foolish and the nations, they know it. It says for more wisdom, the Holy Scriptures, everything them saying is right there. And my voice is to the sons of men. O oh, ye thoughtless, understand prudence. See, a thoughtless person is a fool. That's what you have to understand. You didn't think before you spoke. You didn't think before you act. That's what a fool is. A thoughtless person, understand prudence. Understand how to be cautious in your action. Don't be so quick to do stuff. You got to read and understand the scripture. And ye fools, be ye of an understanding heart. We read this every week. I still re I read it before I got here to do this because I never miss a Sidra. I never miss an A prop. I never read, never miss reading 79, 121st, 124th, 148th Psalm. Every single week ever since I've known it. Read it before I got here. I'm telling you, this is wisdom. That's how you get it. To understand that you want to apply this stuff in your mind and get it to stick there. Ye fools. The Bible speaks to fools. And this one is speaking to black people, to the Israelites. Ye fools, be you of an understanding heart. Listen. Here it says, for I will speak excellent things. And the opening of my lights, lips shall be right things. I'm not speaking about me. The Bible is saying that. Anybody you listen to, you should be able to discern whether they're speaking foolishness or whether they're speaking wisdom. That'll tell you where your mind is at. It goes on and it says more wisdom. Jeremiah 4, 220. For of all time I have broken thy yoke and burst thy bands. And thou saidest, I will not transgress. Upon every high hill and on every leafy tree, thou didst recline, playing the harlot. In other words, you serve every God Black man, Israel, you are the black man. You are the Israelite, Yisrael. You serve every God. You've been a Christian, a Muslim, a Hindu, Harry Krishna, and I could go on and on and on and on. Pentecostal, Baptist, Catholic, and whatever they got out there. The Bible saying you've worshiped every God but me. You've been a fool. Go on and say more. Yet I had planted thee a noble vine. I made you a righteous people. I started with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. How did I end up with these people in Guyana, Jamaica, Trinidad, scattered all over the United States, acting like fools everywhere? Holy, a right seed. How then art thou turned into the generate plant? How did you get to be so low? I'll tell you how. We gave up our wisdom. We rejected the law. We didn't listen to the prophets who told us to do the law. That's why we're in this situation. And Joe Osteen's not going to tell you. Billy Graham Sr. didn't tell you. Billy Graham Jr. is not going to tell you because that's not how they teach the Bible. They, don't, they teach religion. I'm not teaching religion. I'm teaching the truth that's in your Bible and that this is the truth. It's telling the black man you're a fool and here's why you're a fool. Of a strange vine unto me. For though thou hast washed thee with nitre and take thee much soap, Yet thine iniquity is marked before you me. You can wash with all the black soap you want. You will not be clean until you change your way. That's what the Most High is telling you. Until you clean up your foolishness, your unrighteousness behavior, won't even take care of your own children. You're a fool. When you don't, you make a wife and children and you don't take care of your wife and children, you're a fool. That's why the other people are laughing at us. You make money and you get a salary on Friday and you go home Saturday morning with no money in your pocket, you're a fool. And there's many of people doing it, not only my people, but you're at the top of the list, says the Bible. You've been the biggest fool of all. You had the true and living God. You had a lifestyle said no miscarriages. You would have no untimely births, that in everything you do, you would prosper. Only you had to do is be obedient to some instructions 
and they wouldn't do that. Instructions for your own good and benefit. Read your Bible. That's all it's telling you. And if we had done it and was that righteous example somewhere on the earth, we would have been in the Holy Land. All nations would be coming up there to learn of our ways. And you know what the beautiful part about all of this? The hope is that it's still going to happen, but only a remnant because everyone doesn't want to be wise. Some people choose to be stupid. Now you can argue that point if you want. But see, one thing I've learned, the scriptures tell you, don't argue with a fool. Because see, if you argue with a fool and you spend too much time, you're going to be just like him. So that's why you got to recognize when people talking foolishness, you got to cut that conversation and move on. Because it will not be healthy to listen. It can be upsetting. Sometimes it's worse if it's your husband or wife. Now you really in a predicament, your son or your daughter. And you know, no father wants to have the birth to a fool. There's no joy in having a son called a fool. I hope everybody's listening of every gender. Nobody wants a daughter that's a fool. Everybody in their neighborhood is talking about what a slut your daughter is. You tell me you want that? And you tell me she don't have a choice not to do that? Of course, it's wisdom. You have the choice, it's a wisdom. You know, I have a book called A Dictionary of Thoughts. I wanna read something to you, because this is like other people that were wise, that lived before us, that spoke wise things. And so I love wisdom. So just listen to some of these. Wisdom, I told you, or foolishness has no color agenda. April Fool, who? Are you an April Fool? Is this now in the new year or did it come in winter? Think about it. Intelligence is a must in life. Intelligence is a must, it's imperative. If you're gonna live on this earth any length of time, especially a long time, intelligence is a must. And let me tell you something, Torah is intelligence. That's what it is. My people, do you know the Torah? If you ever been in church, did anybody ever in church, Reverend, whatever his name is, Pastor so-and-so, did he ever tell you the laws of God and the instructions of the Torah? In church, you should ask that preacher to tell you and explain to you God's instructions and don't let him tell you they've been done away with because then ask him this question. The creator says, honor thy father and thy mother. Should I honor my father and my mother? See what he tells you. And if you don't get the right answer and you don't know what the right answer is, then you're a fool because you should know the answer to that. Some things are common sense. I want to ask you, common sense in an uncommon decree is what the world calls wisdom, says Coolidge. One fool can ask more questions in a minute than 12 wise men can answer in an hour. That's a, one of those thoughts in the dictionary of thoughts. Any fool can carry on but only the wise knows how to shorten the sail. You stop that conversation because, you know, it's just carrying on as a fool just can go on and on. What we call wisdom is the result of all the wisdom of the past ages. You know, that's why. All the wisdom of modern hours time is nothing but the wisdom of past ages. And guess what the Torah is? The wisdom of past ages our forefathers, the knowledge. Nobody ever pointed us and says, this is how your fathers thought. This was, these are the values and the principles of your ancestors, black man. And if they ever pointed us to that Torah and tell you that, our condition would change immediately as we begin to apply it. Yes. Our best institutions are like young trees growing upon the roots of the trunks that have crumbled away. See, the past, all their wisdom has crumbled away and we have to build on it 
But now we're building some stuff on foolishness because we didn't hold on. Some people never had a parent. See, if you don't have a mother and father that gave you that wisdom, God really helps you. And that's why I'm thankful that y'all are so good to the orphan child. Somebody always comes to take that place of that parent because Yah, he always looks out for them children, for the elderly, for those who are not capable, unable to help themselves. He's for the downtrodden and the low like us, but you gotta have principle. He's not gonna help you just because you're in poverty. Be righteous and be poor. Be a wise person and be needy. You don't have to be degenerate and low. You don't have to live in a ghetto and be ghetto. You don't have to have a, 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 a humble home and have it dirty. You can have a humble home and let it be clean and nice that even the king can come in and say, tell that to welcome me to your humble abode. He feels a spirit of, of love in the house of the most high in your presence. That's what matters to people. That's what H.W. Beecher said years and years ago. He is wise who knows the sources of knowledge, who knows who has written and where it is to be found. A.J. Hodge wrote that. That's wisdom. He is wise who knows the source of knowledge. See, when you go to that New Testament, you don't know the source. You go into the wrong source. You got to go back to Yah's word. Who knows who has written the word of Yah? Those are the real prophets. Isaiah, Yeshiyahu, Jeremiah, Yeremiah, Hosea, Nakun, Habakkuk. Those are real names in Hebrew. Daniel. And I tell you about Daniel, go to Daniel 7.25, because this is why you don't know that it's Passover. It's New Year's right now. Let me tell you something that we've done in our Israelite homes, because the world, you, don't, you never hear us speak about our Passover. You only know the Jewish Passover. Let me tell you what's happening in Israelite homes all around the world. First of all, spring represents a new beginning. And in that new beginning, we have to clean our homes. In many countries, you know the spring cleaning because that's all part of what the Bible says. In the new year, do your spring cleaning. Wash all your curtains, you go in your closets, take out the stuff because after you clean that house, I'm gonna tell you something that's gonna happen. A new Ruach is in the body. See, once you clean your house and wash walls, floors and everything else, it's another spirit in the house. It's clean. That's how every year at Passover, I love this time of the year because as soon as that house starts getting clean and children and wives and everybody's doing their stuff and you're getting your mind ready for speaking to the people, oh, it's a ruach of the new year comes in. And then you're thinking about, I made it to another year. Everybody should be saying, and let me tell you about this Passover. This Passover, you didn't just make it over Passover night, Erev to morning, you made it from last year Passover to this year Passover season because death is still passing over and you're still alive and I'm still alive. Blessed be the maker of heaven and earth, the most high. I thank him for my life, for every person. I don't care what your gender is. I don't care what your nationality is. I thank him for your life. Let me show you something. See, one thing, if you wish something on somebody else, wishing death on someone else, if you dig a pit, dig two. See, I don't have to wish death on nobody. Creator's gonna do that himself if they deserve it. I already know that. Even when I say the year of a record, I don't, I know he only gonna bless the ones who deserve it. See, that blessing doesn't go on everybody's head. The creator knows who's to be blessed and who's to be cursed. That's why Moses said, his deku has a dik, where he harasha. What does that mean? Justify the righteous and condemn the wicked. See, that's in Hebrew. 
That's all in the Torah. That's just that I know the Torah. I know it in Hebrew and in English. So therefore I can say any way I want to say it because you got to meditate in it day and night. It's the greatest book on earth. I've read the Bible more times than I've read any book on earth. And I would advise you to do the same. It's the number one all time bestseller. Go look at some of my other lessons. They're all connected. Nothing that I said in the past, you will not see a connection in this one, every one of them. That's why I would advise you. Go read all of them. I mean, this, I want to just stick this in there. Subscribe, like, and share. Please, I want the whole world to know the truth. You should too, if you're an Israelite. And hey, there's so many other programs. If they're saying what you're hearing here, listen to them. Because we're all speaking the truth that speak the word of Yah. That's how you know. If you hear them speak some stuff that you know it ain't in the Old Testament, some stuff that's in that Christian New Testament, that ain't the Hebrew way of life. You know it ain't even true. You don't have to listen to it. We ain't never had no God as no bad man in the Old Testament. Just read. Moses never had one. He wasn't God and he was the greatest man in his time, but he had to go up to the creator, to the mountain. Ha. Every one after. Nobody knew nothing about JC. In fact, all the modern gods, they wasn't even around back then. In Deuteronomy 32, it says, they would not even cause our forefathers' hair to stand on their head. <laughs> Make your hands stand up, in other words. So said we didn't, we wouldn't even, Abraham wouldn't even listen to nothing about no JC. He said, get out of my face. I, he'd go the other way. You a fool. Because you have to understand, he knew truth. See, when you don't know the truth, people can trick you. They can tell you anything they want to tell you. And that's why you have to know. That's why I say, there is one person that is wiser than anybody. Now listen to that again. There's one person that's wiser than anybody. I know a lot of people say, yeah, but I don't consider him like a human person in the body. Listen to this. There is one person that's wiser than anybody. That is everybody. <laughs> See, that's what I always say. All the people in a room, if you have 20 people in a room, those 20 people are wiser than any one person in the room. Put all his knowledge and everybody or her knowledge and everybody else's knowledge together, it's going to be wiser than that one person. That's a humility statement, too. You got to think that way. You're not the wisest person in the world. <laughs> you don't know more than everybody. That's why my audience out there, I respect it. That's why I say things that I want you to come back and say, no, that ain't in the Bible. Oh, no. One of these days we have a question and answer period and you can challenge me on something. I'll show you because I can't give all my explanations and go as deep as I want to go into these subjects. Time is racing right now and I got to Make sure I get this stuff in. And I can tell you already, oh, this will be more than one session. I already know that right away. Just too much information and I want to share with you. Oh, yes. You read, but one wise, you read, you read, but one wise man and all that he knows was that he knew nothing. <laughs> That's Congrave wrote that. You read, but one wise man or you read but one wise man, all that he knew was that he knew nothing. A wise man knows nothing. Cohen Levy used to say this. He said, anytime you think you are wise, just start writing down all the stuff you don't know. Not what you know, list what you don't know, then you really understand you don't really, you're not all that wise. When you think about all the stuff you don't know. What it is to be wise, tis but to know how little can be known. That was written by Pope. Maybe somebody named Pope or maybe the Pope himself, but it was one of the older Popes. Most wisdom often goes with fewer words. See, now that's two. See, even a fool, if he don't say nothing, he keep his mouth shut, everybody look at him and say, that's, that's a wise brother there. Because he just looks wise. Why? Because he's wise enough not to say nothing. See, that's what you have to know. Those things are so important in life, wisdom. 
Just little simple common sense. Don't talk too much because the more you talk, man, you maybe can start getting into places of force. So little say, you don't have to always be heard. Let somebody else say something. Yes, wisdom is to be found. Wisdom is to the mind what health is to the body. Now let's think about that. Wisdom is to the mind what health is to the body. So I would think that if you wanna have a healthy mind, feed your mind with wisdom, not foolishness. Foolishness will make you crazy. <laughs> That's why it is crazy to be foolish, to be a fool. Yeah, so crazy. It's like that man, you know, I read about him, heard about him, that he saw the policeman on the side of the road and the policeman was, had some children there showing them how their new computer in the police car works. So this guy drove over, he's fascinated, he likes computers. He pulls over to the side and he says, this is so interesting. So he gives them his license to say, uh, tell me, uh, you know, how can you tell me, look me up. So they looked up his stuff and they, Surprisingly, he found out that he had two felonies and he was wanted for a robbery. And you know what happened, they arrested him on the spot. Now, you know, when he was sitting in that jail, he must have even said to himself, how could I be so stupid to have given them my ID, forgot that I had been committing them crimes before, and let them look up my information and arrest me on the spot. It's like turning yourself in. <laughs> I tell you, it's all kind. Of, some people are stupid to the hurt of people. Now that's that's serious stuff. When you got an anger management problem, and you came home and your dinner wasn't ready, and you threw the pots, everything everything went on the floor. You ain't care now. You ain't got no food. You, See, eating a little late is better than not eating at all. Because all your food's on the floor. Because you didn't have no discipline, self-control. If Isha had some things, she might have been sick that day. And things a little late. See, everybody can be the fool. Reverse it in the Isha. Oh, you came home late? I know you've been cheating. Yeah, see, anybody, gender don't matter. So what she do, I burn all the food up. When you come in, where you been? Oh, I was at your mother's house. Your mother, go call up. He was here the whole time. Oh boy, I burnt up all that food. It could be worse. Sometimes they throw acid on you. So you don't know about the seriousness that comes out of foolishness. Now you messed up for life. Somebody done threw acid on your body. Some women, they smart. We had an argument. I asked you to buy me this. You said, no, you didn't give me that car. She boiled that water. You go to sleep, pour that ball of water on you. You married a stupid, foolish wife. See, that's why when you choose a spouse, a lot of work should go into it. I think as much work as choosing an automobile. Now, brothers, you know, when you go to choose a car, what do you do? Check under that hood. See how much horsepower we got. Check that stereo system to see how much that has. You do all of them things. You're going to check the post tree to see that that's nice. But when you choose a woman, you say she's pretty. I like her. I'm married. No. Even the sisters, they walk through them malls for hours looking at shoes. That's why I don't go shopping with my wife. I learned that as, as a child. You don't want to go shopping with them. Give them the money, let them go. Because that could be a task that you're not up for. And you want to know why. And they try them on, no, I don't like that one. Try on this, I don't like that one. And they be in there going back and forth for hours. Now you might think, for them, that may not be foolish. And see, one man's meat, a person's meat, another man's pork. I don't have a problem with you doing that. It's just, don't have me do it with you. 
And so again, there's all kinds of ways and things that people can have ways that we one might think is foolish, another, that's just the way life is. Some of it can even be humorous if you can have a little humor in life. Our chief wisdom consists in knowing our follies and faults that we may correct them. That's wisdom. Your chief wisdom is knowing yourself and knowing your own faults. See, most people look to other people's and think and criticize and critiquing them, but they don't critique themselves hard enough. The person that does is wise, especially if you're using it to correct your ways. I like this one. It's an Arabic proverb. A wise man's day is worth a fool's life. <laughs> that's Arabic. I love, that's, that's, that's beautiful. It's just so sound. Wisdom makes so much sense. A wise man's day is worth a fool's life. Man, that's heavy stuff. If you just think about all the stuff that a person can do just in a day that's wise and how a fool can every day, all day long, just act a fool, carry on as we read earlier, carry on like a fool. Well, yeah, I hope you're not being a whip on yourself. That's not what the program is designed. It's to show you truth in the scriptures. Remember, do you know that this is really New Year's? Happy New Year. Shana Tova. 32, 32nd of March, they said in that listening program. There is no 32nd of March. So what did they do? Carry that one day over to the 1st of April, April Fool's Day. There ain't no reason for April Fool's. We're the reason for April Fool's. My people, we're the fools because we don't know who we are. We're the fools because we don't know this is our new year. We're fools because we're getting ready for Easter and don't know you used to be preparing for Passover. You used to be eating unleavened bread instead of worrying about Lent. That's why you're the fool and everybody knows you are. And let's listen to Malcolm tell you. Here's how Malcolm said it in his own way. Decades ago almost 30 more plus 40 years than the 60s, you know, you can do the math, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, 2010, 2021. Here's what Malcolm said back then. And you know what we're talking about. So I want you to know, you and I know that Malcolm probably was one of the men that brought us closest to understanding the difference between religion and nationality. He said, I'm a black nationalist. Unfortunately, he died. I know if he had lived, he would have figured it out. Maybe it just wasn't his portion. Cone Levy figured it out. Maury Yosef, the co Reed, he figured it out. Rabbi Matthews figured it out. Rabbi Yirmiyahu figured it out. Oh yeah, Rabbi Shalom has figured it out. All of us, their students, we got it. Oh yeah, we got it. We know, we are doing Passover all over this world, in South Africa, and got to know how to keep it. It's a day to remember that the creator without any of our own power, he delivered us from a powerful nation in Egypt. Pharaoh, Pharaoh's army, he overthrew them. And he's doing the same thing today, but it's a new Egypt, it's Egypt by ships. It's not Egypt in one country. We're in Egypt all around the world. Why is it Egypt? Metaphorically, we're being oppressed all around the world. Discriminated against racial hatred, systemic racism. That's all that was, that's what it was in Egypt. But it's now it's global, compounded. He said that they would not have no regard for the young or the old when I send you in this captivity. They don't care whether you're a young man or old man, they're gonna disrespect you. Boy, 85 years old, call you a boy. And he's only 10 years old. That happened. See, our children, you didn't expect, I'm old enough, my parents, 
I saw that happen with my grandparents when I went down south as a child, how the children spoke to grown men, how my parents walked around with no shoes, grandparents, shoes, you children, and you better think, yeah, that you got shoes on your feet. You didn't know. And it wasn't uh, uh, but a couple of, less than a hundred years ago, we're talking about, we were living as a people terrible. So that we have to, these children have to understand that. Now your plantation is Rikers Island. Sing, sing, you're going to jail because you didn't listen to instructions. When we first got here, the most high punished us. Now we're bringing the punishment on ourselves. The children, you're killing each other. I call you the deaf generation. You're the generation that's dying. You're born to die. You better get some wisdom quick. I'm trying to help you stay alive. Fear the creator, keep his commandments. It's the beginning of wisdom. I'm telling you, he that thinks himself wisest is generally he who thinks himself the least so. But Lord, it is wiser, it is easier to be wise for others than for ourselves. <laughs> That's wisdom too. See, a lot of people are wise for other people. You tell them everything wise to do, but you ain't applying it in your own life. You wise for others. Many children, parents telling you the wise thing to do and your parent acting like a fool. <laughs> See, there's no fool like an old fool. Yeah, a 40 year old and older fool. Listen to Malcolm. Then we are realizing that our problem in America, that we are black Americans and we have a problem that goes beyond religion. We formed a group known as the Organization of Afro-American Unity. And the objective of this organization is non-religious, number one. Any Negro can belong to it. And the objective of, the, of that organization is to uh, bring about a condition that will guarantee respect and recognition of the 22 million black Americans as human beings. We feel that the problem, number one, of the black man in America is beyond America's ability to solve. It's a human problem, not an American problem or a Negro problem. And as a human problem or a world problem, we feel that it should be taken out of the jurisdiction of the United States government and the United States courts and taken into the United Nations in the same manner that the problems of the black man in South Africa, Angola, and other parts of the world, and even the way they're trying to bring the problems of the Jews in Russia into the United Nations because of violation of human rights. We believe that our problem is one not a violation of civil rights, but a violation of human rights. Not only are we denied the right to be a citizen in the United States, we're denied the right to be a human being. We've been bamboozled, hoodwinked. You know what he said, duped, let him up. That's what we have to understand. We have been tricked. We've been made fools. We're treated like we're fools. Let's listen to the Holy Scriptures. We'll get some more wisdom as we continue the program. Proverbs 18.2. A fool hath no delight in understanding, but only that his heart may lay its, itself Just say there. whatever I want to say. I got to get it out no matter what. I don't care nothing about what you think. That's the way fools behave, don't you? 16.6. By mercy and truth, iniquity is expiated. And by the fear of Yehoah, men depart from evil. That's it. When a man's ways please Yehoah, he make it even his enemies to be at peace That's with him. That's what you get with being wise. You're pleasing the creator, he'll turn everybody, even your enemies, he'll make them treat you nice. It goes on to say wisdom. 19.1. Better is a fool that walketh in his integrity than he that is perverse in his lips and a fool at the same time. In other words, walk in your integrity. If you're not that smart, at least be smart enough to know right from wrong. Common sense. Verse 10. Luxury is not seemly for a fool, much less for a servant to have rule over princes. That's why things today are out of place. You, so-called black man, you should be ruling the earth and you are now the slave in the earth because you become a fool. And the fool is ruling the planet today. You know it. Look at what's happening on the earth today. It's not being done by wise men. That's why if you look at it happening all across the planet, women are running 
to be politicians and to take the place in the decision making because they feel that men are messing up the planet. You better watch what's happening. Women are taking over the decision making in CEO positions all across the planet because men are stupid and we don't think we are. That's the problem is. We think the women's stupid and the man is the one who's the fool and this time on earth. If you really look around and say, well, who's more foolish, men or women? Oh, come on now. You smart enough to know it's us. The women aren't ruling, the men are. That's why one time the, the creator said, I caused babes to rule over you because after a while, the children are gonna be ruling. In some homes, the children are. The mother can't tell the child nothing. The grandmother can't tell the son or the granddaughter nothing. The children are ruling in certain places because wisdom is failing the adults. Everything has become reversed. You have to get spiritual understanding. This is not scientific stuff that they're talking about. This is not gonna be any medical stuff. Your medicine is the spirit and the knowledge of God is your healer. Everybody on the planet, especially his chosen people. The Torah is your healer. The law, righteousness, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. 29. Judgments are prepared for scorners and stripes for the back of fools. That's it is. That's why people get beat. Beat. That's why people go to jail. That's why people get chopped up. You know how many people did not have to die? Let's take one that I know. You know. Two men riding down the road. One of the vehicles wants to make a turn and cuts in front of the other vehicle just as the light is changing. Not an accident, but a very foolish act. So instead of the driver who's at the light going straight, which is where he's headed, I'm going to teach him a lesson. I'm going to curse him out. He follows him to the next light going in another direction, pull down his window, curses the guy out, they call each other mother's names. And so they race to the next light, they get there. He pulls out his gun and the other guy pulls out his gun. They start shooting at each other and shoot each other to death. In Jamaica, the same thing happened where they stabbed each other to death. They got out the car and they stabbed each other to death. Both of their families came each of them stabbing one after another. You stab him, I stab you back, stab you in the neck, I stab you in the neck. And both of them lay there dead. Their families coming and find out what happened. They all are crying and what they're saying. Why couldn't he just keep going and come home? Why did he have to go follow that man? Why didn't you just roll? Why didn't you roll? Why'd you roll down your window and pull out your gun? Because I didn't think he had one. That's what happens. People don't think. See, now, it would be one thing if all these examples were just fables that I made up, but every one of them is a true story in the news. That's why I'm doing this program. It's necessary. Every program that I do, I try to make sure it's something that will share and help. I don't want to hurt your feelings. I don't want to tear you down. I know that to change the condition on the planet, all of us have to change our behaviors. If you're one of those persons saying, no, not me, I'm righteous, you're probably the person that needs to listen to me the most. I'm saying to you, this is serious information. We're living in a serious situation on earth. It's terrible. And it don't have to be that way. It's foolish. I believe more people are being killed by human beings than by the COVID-19. Or at least we're in a race that's very close. I, somebody should take the statistics in a week or a month or a year, how many people died by COVID-19 and how many people died by domestic violence. outside violence. They always speak about domestic violence. What about Bakut? <laughs> outside violence. Now with the pandemic, seems like more people getting killed at home and beat up at home than on the street because 
a lot of crazy people can't go out now. So the fool is home more than usual. Whereas he normally would do his foolishness on the street, now the children is hearing it. The wife, the husband, or the parents, because any one of them could be a fool. Got some children, they in the European white suburbs, those children have gone home and those parents are dealing with kids that's on pills taking all them drugs. I even think spiritually that somebody should say, it seems like what was happening in the ghetto has now moved to the suburbs. Where it was in the 60s and 70s, the black inner cities were the places where the black man and they were on drugs. Now my children, the suburban people and the Europeans are saying, our children. It's like what goes around has come around. If you look at it spiritually, they're suffering now too. That's why this is not about black and white. I mean, if you have pain, I don't think the color of your skin matters. See, I wanna tell you the truth. I've seen things that have happened to people of other ethnicities and it was just as hurtful as it was my own people. Because it's sad, you don't wanna see that happen to anybody. It's like Malcolm said, if you want to be viewed as a human being, then the parallel duty is to view other people as human beings also. That's why my message is fair. It's just, it's the truth. It's right. It's not biased for one side or the other. Them European people, they're catching it right now on this planet. That man that went in there and shot up all them people the other day, they don't, they're don't—they not seeing the spiritual side of that. The policemen are killing our sons on one hand and their own sons are killing their people on the other. It's a message from God to everybody. Stop the killing. I hope you understand it. Listen to some music. Don't twist it the wrong way now. Don't take what I said and twist it to be something else because you don't want to accept the truth. The truth can hurt sometimes, but so is medicine that don't taste good. It will heal you if you're willing to take the medicine. Let's listen to some music that'll make you think about the most high, about righteousness, about wisdom, knowledge, and understanding.
Well, I told all the camp, Happy New Year. You know it's New Year. To all my family, brothers and sisters, Shana Tova Lakim, I hope that you understand this message. Here's a message that's praying that we'll all be wise this year. It's not only for those that know, but all those who might not know that this is New Year, spring, and that we want to spring into some new behavior this year. Righteousness is the call, wisdom rather than folly is needed especially at this time of peril across the planet. We need people who understand proper speech. The whip is for the back of fools and a lot of people are being whipped by God today, the most high. The fear of Yah is to depart from evil and that shows that you are a wise person. A fool has no delight in understanding stripes must be given. That's why some people don't see as trouble in your life being a strife from God. Are you in an argument every hour of the day, every time you look up, you're in some other foolishness? It's telling you God is trying to talk to you. You're not being wise. See, this is the thing about life. Most people who are quick to want to get in violence, they don't realize that that could be the very time you die because you didn't think that it was going to get that serious. You start your foolishness calling each other names, making an argument over nothing, and next thing you know, somebody shoot you or stab you and you deaf. And most time they're going to do it in the back. You ain't going to see it anyway. But you provoked it because you made that bed that you have to sleep in. So that's the wisdom of old people. You don't do things to make a bad sleeping night in the day. That's why they say the bed you make, you got to sleep in. The things you do, you got to deal with it. You don't have to deal with a lot of stuff if you just have the wisdom. Keep your mouth shut at the right time. Stay out of the way of a fool. So if another man's a fool, you're going to say, he said something, you said you, come on, use your wisdom. Most time it'd be somebody that don't even know God and you claiming you do. Who's the real fool? That's what I'm saying. See, wisdom is to be applied. A lot of people say, oh, I read the Bible. I'm an Israelite. I got my ZTs on. How do you apply the wisdom of the Torah? That's what really matters. Not that you keep the Shabbat. <laughs> so do the ox and the goat and the cow. They keep it too. If the righteous Israelites letting them rest. Hey, they ain't bothering nobody in the field. <laughs> what about you? How you getting in so much trouble and confusion? Oh, I love wisdom. It's an everyday challenge to be wise. To have the right speech. Oh, you may slip today, but did you think about it? Now, when you come back tomorrow doing the same thing that you did yesterday, it's like a dog returning to its vomit. <laughs> That's a proverb. <laughs> we'll probably have it read maybe next week, if not this week. But let's listen to a few more words of wisdom before we close out this week's program. I hope and pray that you know it's New Year's. Shana Tova Lakin. Even though they might have changed it, I told you in Daniel, if we read that precept, he told you that the time would come when they would change the time, the law and the seasons. They did that. And so we want to read Daniel 7.25 because it's true. That's why you don't keep New Year's in March, April, which is the seasonal it's that harmony with creation that I spoke about last week, being in tune with the cycles of life. When you do this, you're in tune with Yah because creation is renewing itself. We were freed out of Egypt at the same time that was spring. That's why he tells you, Aviv shall be the beginning of months unto you in the book of Exodus. It's all connected. I'm trying to connect the dots for you. 
doesn't matter what part of the scriptures you're reading, it's all one story about one people under one God, the maker of heaven and earth. Don't let people trick you and change it up. Don't be an April fool. So you don't have to be an Israelite to be a fool any day, any week, any month of the year. Anybody can be a fool. Some people are made fools. See, that's different. We've been made fools by the most high. Stupefy yourselves and be stupid. Blind yourselves don't mean blind. He blinded our thinking eye, our third eye. That's why we're blind, mentally blind. We don't know how to think intelligently. That's what this is all about. Don't be an April fool. Subtitle, be wise or be a fool. See, it's a choice. You're going to be one or the other. What are you going to be today? What are you going to be tomorrow? See, a lot of people get good during the holy season. And people try to say during their, their seasons, Xmas, New Year's, uh, goodwill to all men, brotherhood. They kill people on Christmas Day. That stuff don't mean nothing. It's just a bunch of talk. All them colorful lights and all that, the evil still went on. In fact, Yah is knocking Christmas out, if you really understand what's happening. Last Christmas was not a merry one. Everybody knows it. Because there's no love in Christmas. It's all hypocrisy. It's all foolishness. It's not even God's birthday. <laughs> How could you give an eternal being a birthday? And then how many candles should we put on the cake? You don't have enough in the whole planet for an eternal being. And you know, when you read the scriptures, the only birthday ever celebrated was Pharaoh's. Moses' birthday, you don't know? Hey, when birthdays come, be thankful that you made it to another year of life. And it's just the same time as yesterday, as last year. And I'll tell you something, you can only have one birthday. Your next day is your death day. You can be born spiritually again. You can go from stupidity to wisdom. You can go from a sleeping dark mind to an awakened and enlightened mind. That's another prayer I say in Hebrew. Tisa et hataradema me amka Yisrael. Taradema is a deep sleep. Nisa, Tisa, lift up. Tasir, remove the deep sleep that's on us. It's my prayer. My program is backing it up. Awaken, not only us, waking everybody on the planet. The other people are sleeping too. They went to sleep when we went to sleep. There was no example of law or righteousness. So you can't blame anybody. Everybody on every human being is guilty. We gotta change this. We can just think differently. As a man thinketh, as a woman thinketh, so is he, so is she. Think right, you'll be right. Think evil, you'll be evil and eventually you will do it. Listen to wicked music. You're filling your bread, your head with stuff that's in your subconscious that's not good. If you're strong, some people can view things. They say different strokes for different folks. You got to know yourself. And all that knowing, know thyself. You got to know what you're strong enough to deal with. That's right. No sense going to a boxing match and you can't stand people getting bloodied up. That don't make no sense. Somebody's gonna get a busted nose, a bloody mouth sooner or later. Some people can take it, some people can't. I got a sister, she only watches Perry Mason and stuff like that. She gonna never watch no violent movies. She don't enjoy music, movies like that. She will watch like uh, The Godfather, Scarface, no, Perry Mason. She's probably laughing right now. She knows exactly what I'm talking about. That's right, Abbott and Costello. You know, stuff like that. Leave it to Beaver. 
no violence here, no worry about nothing, no harsh speech is gonna be a nice movie. But today entertainment, people just like evil stuff, it's like popular. It's in vogue, it's entertaining when you see people get killed, when you see people raped. People like that stuff. I don't know why, you gotta ask them. <laughs> Ask everybody around you why they like it. Because there's people, one individual can't tell you, but all I know is we need to think about serious things. Like that Solomon proverb, maybe we'll do it next week because I see our time is running out. The wise man goes to the house of mourning, but the fool, he likes it in the house of laughter. Some people like they don't like serious programs like this. Even though I have a little humor in it, I put the humor in it to let you know that, hey, I want you to think, think seriously, but life has humor in it. You can see humor in a lot of things that's happening because that's how you don't get depressed. You gotta know how to understand it and not let it weigh on you. Don't let this pandemic COVID-19 will you. Your spirit and righteousness is your vaccine. Vitamin C is your defense. Doing what's right will back up your immune system and put the angels of Yah around you so you don't dash your foot this means that so nothing don't happen to you so you don't hurt yourself. Do unto others as you will have them do unto you. Stay out of stupid, foolish behavior. This is not the time for it when you are angry. Be at peace within your spirit and your mind, thinking wisely, intelligently, Seeking wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Loving to do right. Loving to be in a peaceful place and with people that are happy around you. How can you be happy when your wife is not? How can you be happy when your children are not? I mean, not that they don't have problems. You don't let them tear you down because you can't do anything about that. You just want to keep praying for your children all the time that the Most High will deal with them and help them and, and guide them because you're a parent. You can't be there all the time. You did your job in raising them. Every tub has to sit on its own bottom. They got to figure it out. We're there to guide and help them, but in the ultimate, they got to make the decision and the choice is theirs to do good or to do evil. The choice is ours to do right or to do wrong. And Yah gives every one of us according to our doings, according to the choices that we make. I would like to say Shana Tova Lakim, Happy New Year. May these words not fall on deaf ears May they enter your heart and your mind. May this season of Passover and righteousness increase on the earth, remove the COVID-19. No vaccine is not going to. Do you know what I want you to think about? When Pharaoh attempted to deal with the plagues that Yah put on Egypt, rather than submit himself to the Most High, he made every play worse and the place became more severe at every stage. Just keep watching. You'll see how this is gonna play out. Time tells a story. Live, think, look, see, and reason deeply within yourself. Seek the most high earnestly. Seek truth, 
Seek wisdom sincerely. Yah will find you if you seek him hard enough. Pray and call. You can change no matter who you are. The Torah, the laws in Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy is where all the instructions to the path of life are written. It is the tree of life. Eitz Kayim et HaTorah. The Torah is a tree of life. Yivareka Yehovah, ve Yishmareka. Yair Yehovah Panayu, Aleka Wikuneka. Yisa Yehovah Panayu, Aleka. Ve Yasim, Leka Shalom. Nehalelia, Alleluia. Oh, I'm 
Thank <laughs> you.